Hello, everyone. It's uh, January 15th, 2024. Halfway through this month. <laughs> and every day we get a little bit more light, and I love it. So anyway, today we're going to look at a pen I got at Christmas time. And I had known about this pen, and I was interested in it. It's not an expensive pen. I asked for it, you know, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, give me this. And I got it. And it's this little pen right here. It is. A Diplomat Magnum. Uh, I think it's probably Diplomat's entry-level pen, relatively inexpensive. $25, I believe, at the bookmark in Charlottetown here. That's where we they got it for me. Um, and it's a, a student pen or a beginner's pen. Or if you're a little bit more experienced, it's a great everyday carrier. And I am very impressed with this little pen. I have to be honest. Because, well, Diplomat, Diplomat, I have another Diplomat here. Let's just talk about this. This is the more expensive Diplomat. I believe they have a, a higher-end version. That there's a, another uh, level above this. Uh, but this is the Diplomat Arrow. Uh, I got it last year. Lovely pen. I love this pen. Um, but this pen, you could buy, you know, 10 of these probably for what the diplomat arrow goes for now it's gone up a little bit in price but for 25 dollars, you get the diplomat experience in some ways and when i say the diplomat experience um apparently it's a yo-o nib which is used by many many different companies but they do something to these nibs they tune them somehow or they're manufactured specifically for diplomat and they do an excellent job. It's a steel nib on the arrow. And uh, it's a steel nib on this one, of course, for $25. And they write beautifully. Now, everybody, you know, says that gold nibs are far superior than steel. Uh, that might have been true back in the day, you know, the 50s, 40s, whatever, when uh, steel nibs were kind of crappy. <laughs> but... The technology has improved. Alloys are better. Um, and they they seem to be able to produce an excellent steel nib these days. You know, uh, Twisby, you know, I think with their Yoa nibs, they're excellent writers. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> they do something with this nib. Whoever it is is a magician. Uh, and they... This little pen here, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it actually is, in many ways, a better writing experience than the arrow. And I really like writing with the arrow. And I think the reason it is, it's a soft feeling nib. Now, how long this pen is going to last? I don't know. This pen, the uh, Diplomat Arrow, uh, is made of all metal very well made, solid pen, beautifully machined. This should last, well, this should last a long, long time if you take care of it. Um, it's one of those hair, heirloom pens. You'll probably be finding these pens 50 years from now in excellent condition. Probably finding these pens 100 years from now in excellent condition. Uh, this is, of course, a cheaper pen, so it's made of plastic. Uh, you know, the, the clip is just a, a thin little piece of metal, probably, um, you know, it's springs, of course, but you know, that will eventually break. I would say the first thing to break in this would be the clip, but the pop, the body is plastic. Uh, so yeah, it's not going to last a hundred years. If it lasts 10 years, I'll be happy. If it lasts longer, I'll be happy. I take care of my pens. But, you know, this is the type of pen you toss in a bag, you toss in a pocket. You don't have to worry about it. You didn't spend a lot of money. You might be annoyed that you'll lose it because it's an excellent writer. <laughs> so let's talk about the Diplomat Magnum. It's a pull cap. It has a little window right here, which to me signifies that it's a student pen. You see a lot of uh, older student pens or even still see a lot of student pens and they have this little ink window here just so you can monitor how much ink you have the Lamy safari also has an, an ink window and there are some similarities between this the Lamy is probably a little bit better made uh the clip for instance it's a heavy wire very durable plastic seems a little 
stronger than the, the Magnum. Uh, I love my Lamy Safari. I love Lamy, but the Diplomat Air, uh, Magnum is a much superior writer. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, there are, uh, there are some other similarities. So you, you look at the section on the Safari, you see this very pronounced triangular grip section. You know, it almost forces you, well, you are kind of forced to hold the pen in, I guess, a proper manner or a, spe a specific manner. And it's very uh, visually evident. It, you, you pull this off. The section also has a triangular, triangular shape to it, uh, but it's not as pronounced. Uh, and it does also, you know, inspire you to hold it in a specific manner. The section on the Lamy is much larger than the section on the Diplomat Arrow. So this is quite small. Some people might like that. Some people might not like that. Um, it's a cartridge converter filler. Right now I have a cartridge in it. I, it's a standard international cartridge I put in it. And I filled it up with, um, it was an empty one, I, and I filled it up with uh, Diamine Oxblood, my newest, one of my Christmas inks, which I'm really happy with. And it matches this beautiful red very nicely. But, you know, when it's posted, it's a good size pen. I like the size of it. Section's a little small, but I don't mind that, actually. Um, I tend to hold my pens a little further back uh, from the section. There's a little step right there you can feel, but it's not sharp. It's not uncomfortable. Um, but all in all, it's a nice size pen. It's a small nib in many ways, uh, but not, well, actually, let's see how small it is. This is, this is the Pilot, uh, this is the Pilot Metropolitan. And actually, it's, the nibs are very comparable in size. The Pilot's just a little bigger, I would say. Uh, the Pilot I, I brought out because it's, uh, falls into sort of the same cat category in some ways. You know, this is a, say, a $35, $40 pen now in Canada, all metal, very well made. It'll last a little longer, but this is still <laughs> an excellent writer. I, I keep going on about how well it writes. So yeah, I have a it uns this section on screws. I have a little cartridge in it. Put it back on, pop cap. It's very nice and uh, has a nice little click. I like that. For whatever reason, I think Magnum, uh, the, uh, Dipl uh, <laughs> Diplomat, really gets into the click sound of their pens. It's kind of a little feature they have. Very nice. <laughs> One of my favorite things about the Arrow is that sound. And you know, <laughs> it's weird. I like it. It's just fun. You do have a bit of that here. Yeah. So it posts, of course, posts very nicely, very secure. Uh, the body material, of course, is resin or plastic. Uh, it's a Yobo stainless steel nib, snap cap, standard international cartridges, cartridge converter. So the body diameter is 12.2 millimeters. The cap is 15.5 millimeters. The grip section is 8.3 millimeters right here. Length of the cap is 52 millimeters. Length of the body is 123 millimeters. Length of the nib uh, is 17.1. Overall posted, it's 151.7 millimeters. And weight overall is 14 grams. So when you put a little bit of ink in it, say go up to 14 and a half, 15 grams, not a very heavy pen. But what it does do <coughs> is give you a lovely bit of line variation. I've noticed this about you when I'm writing with this pen. Um, there's a softness and a spring to the nib or a bounce, a slight bounce. I'm not saying it's in any way a flex nib, I would, you know, but you do get some lovely little variations in your line as you're writing with it. And also it is incredibly smooth. So the quick Brown fox. Yeah. 
over. Lazy dog. Now, as you see, you apply just a slight of pr pressure to it, and you will get a nice little, um, little bit of flair to your writing. Very nice. As you can see there, and that's that's a lovely little thing. <clears throat> I've used um, modern pens that claim to be flex nibs. And they aren't. <laughs> you really have to press. This doesn't claim to be a flex nib. It's not sold as a flex nib. It's not even sold as a a soft nib. But there's just a, a lovely line variation and softness to the nib. Beautifully smooth. Lovely writer. I love this pen. And for $25, you're not going to have to worry about losing it unless somebody just borrows it from you and realizes how much they like the pen and just keeps it. <laughs> but if you know, if you have um if you wanted to buy a couple pens just that to have to give away, this would be a very good introduction to somebody who might have interest in uh trying out a fountain pen. And they come in some nice colors. There's, you know, this is the red one. I believe there's white, blue, purple, green, uh, a couple others probably. I don't know if they come out with new colors every year or if they do any special editions, but it's all, it, it's a very nice color. Very nice. And it, it actually, I've been using this and uh, I don't notice any little scuffs forming when I cap, when I cap it. Um, it seems to be very durable. It, it is going to get beat up over time. I, I understand that, but uh, I quite like it. Now, have you tried the Diplomat at Magnum? Let me know, let me know in the comments. Has your uh, if you've had your Diplomat for a while now, has it held up? You know, I'm curious to find that out too. Uh, that let me know that in the comments. But uh, here's just a few uh, other pens in comparable sizes. You know, this is the Arrow. This is the Magnum, Lamy Safari, Pilot Metropolitan, and the Platinum Preppy. Of course, this one is the more expensive of all of these. So, yeah. And there are a couple other diplomats I'd like to try. You know, I, I've seen a few kicking around. And uh, it's a German company, I should say that. Um, and I believe this comes in extra fine, fine and medium in nibs. I don't think there's a huge selection in the, in the nib variation. So that's... So anyway, there you have it. The... Diplomat Magnum, a beautiful little pen, lovely to use. Um, I don't expect much from it, you know, as say for longevity. Uh, if it lasts longer than a decade, I'll be happy. If it lasts a couple of years, I'll be happy. I'll be sad if it broke in a few weeks, but I don't think it will. It feels well enough made that it's going to hold up. And I don't use my clips. I, I, I tend not to stick my sh my pens in my shirt pocket i don't do that now that anyway that's what the main part of the video is about the diplomat magnum but i have something else i'm going to show you and i was wandering around my local thrift store today and i had a little discovery yay i got this and it's a lystrom 1917 notebook i'd say it's ledger size and i got it for four bucks Four dollars Canadian, so that's a really nice find. I'm very happy with this. <laughs> you can't have too many notebooks. You can't have too many Lystrums. Oh, somebody had used it. You can see they well, they cross, they whited out their name, but I they, they don't actually seem to have ever used it. I can Lystrum. I love. I love the the the. the the quality of the books and the paper it's you can see the stitching there the binding i like this actually this this uh table of contents and, and i usually use a journal like the a5 section slot sides which is quite a bit smaller but uh i i um do every now and then use bigger uh notebooks for different things i i do have a ledger for certain things i'm working on but i like this table of contents uh, setup they have here. It's very generous. And then, of course, you open it up and it is 
a dot matrix. Now, somebody uh, did remove a couple pages, but no more than a couple, I think, because it seems to be pretty much intact. It, well, one section's gone, I'd say, but still, it's very good shape. Uh, actually, oh, it tells me right here how many pages are gone. So, and just one sheet is gone, so that's page three right here. And there are 121 pages. Dot matrix, which is my favorite. Is it dot matrix? I keep saying dot matrix. Grid, grid dot, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I quite like it. And what, one of my favorite things about the Lystrom, or any notebook, if they have this, is the accordion folder at the back. And of course, you get these very lovely title blocks and spine. This little strip here goes on the spine of your notebook. Um, that'll slide in here. I might use this as a journal. I haven't used a journal this size in a long, long time. Um, <laughs> I used to use artist um, sketchbooks. I would be drawing in my sketchbook and I would continue, I would use it also as a journal. So I have a few of those kicking around and, I, and those are bigger. Uh, but this is a nice size actually, very nice. You know, there's a pen on, there's a pen for comparison. So I lucked out. I had a great thrift store find. Have you ever found anything pen related in a thrift store? Let me know, what's your best find? Is this my best find? <laughs> I've not really had a huge amount of luck with um, fountain pen related things in thrift stores. I've not really come across a fountain pen. I've found uh, notebooks and things like that. I've found lots of other things in thrift stores, you know, that I adapted. But anyway, this is my nicest find to date in some ways that I, I would say stationary related. But anyway... So let me know in the comments what you think of everything. What are you using? How's your January going? Looking forward to the end of it. Anyway, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and we'll be doing more videos, of course. And I hope you have a great day. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.